Schizophrenia is a pervasive global illness that transcends country and ethnicity. A 2012 review by Georgetown's Journal of Health Sciences estimated symptoms affect about 0.7% of the global population, with similar rates of onset around the world. But that doesn't mean different populations experience schizophrenia the same way. Cultural attitudes and conditions play an elusive but clear role in how the illness affects a patient, which in turn can affect diagnosis and treatment. New research led by Stanford anthropologist Tanya Lerman offers a telling window into how these differences can play out. For a new study published in the British Journal of Psychiatry, Lerman's team interviewed 60 adults diagnosed with schizophrenia in the United States, India, and Ghana, focusing on auditory hallucinations, the voices schizophrenia patients often describe. The team asked the men and women how many voices they heard, how often they heard them, and what they said. No matter their location, subjects reported good and bad voices, and sometimes general whispering or hissing. All said they had conversations with the voices, but key differences emerged. Indian subjects were more likely to hear the voices of family members or kin asking them to complete tasks, and they also reported that the voices seemed more playful and sexual. In Ghana, subjects had an increased likelihood to hear God and have benign interactions with their voices. Americans, meanwhile, reported threatening and violent experiences, like being told to attack other people. Most starkly, while many of the Indian and African subjects registered positive experiences with their voices, not a single American did. African and Indian subjects were less disturbed by their voices, choosing to interpret them as relationships, whereas nearly all of the Americans treated them as a, quote, violation of their minds. The researchers speculate that the differences may lie in the emphasis on an independent self in Western nations, as opposed to a more interdependent collective sense in some developing countries. Regardless, the results could have a clinical impact. One possible approach is to nurture patients' relationships with their voices, encouraging them to name and engage the hallucinations with the hope more benign interactions will result. 